welcome. My name is Amber and I'm the owner and creator behind Being a Bliss. And today I am going to do a video, another how-to video on how I make my baby bell bottoms. So mine are made a little bit different than the very popular ones that you guys see today um, with a separate big cuff for the bell bottom. Mine are just slightly, um, I would say a flare. So maybe like a boot cut sort of pant. Um, I wouldn't consider it a complete bell bottom, but I've had a lot of questions on how I make them. So today I'm going to do a how-to video on how I make them. And this is the fabric we're going to be using today. This is my Christmas fabric. So I am super excited to make these bell bottoms out of this fabric. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. If you have any questions along the way, just leave them in the comments below and let's get started. Okay, so in order to get started with these bell bottoms, I'm going to show you the supplies that I use for them. So you're gonna to have to get a pattern for the bell bottoms. You can purchase a pattern on any website that offers um, patterns or you can get them on Etsy. Etsy has a lot of bell bottom patterns. And if you do buy the ones that have a separate cuff, like I was talking about earlier, they're a little bit more of a flare and the process is different than the process I'm going to show you today. So you're gonna to wanna to purchase a bell bottom that is just one continuous leg where you just hem the bottom because that's what we're gonna be doing today. So anyway, this is my pattern and I actually have these made in acrylics. So, um, a lot of my patterns I have acrylics made for now. If you are interested in doing the acrylics, um, I believe I have it linked in the description below. If not, just message me and I can get you the link to my acrylic company. So anyway, here's the pattern. You have two legs and you have a waistband. There will be no cuffs on here because this is your cuff right here and we just hem it. So I will show you guys that in a little bit when we get to that part. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is uh, some hemming tape. This is the hemming tape that I use. It is a quarter of an inch. Um, I have tried several different hemming tapes, and this is the one that I like. I get it on Amazon. I can link it for you guys if you're interested. There are several different kinds that you can get, but I've run into the issue of them being too sticky and gumming up my needles. This one is very good. It doesn't gum my needles up. It doesn't skip stitches or anything like that. It holds my fabric in place, just what I want it to do. So you will need this if you're gonna be doing it the way that I make them. Obviously, you're gonna need some sort of cutter, scissors if you trace it, um, rotary cutter. I will be using this one today. Um, scissors, just in case you need to cut off a little edge, but you don't necessarily need them. I just always have them handy. Um, and then some fabric or sorry, pattern weights if you need that. Um, I don't usually use them a whole lot with the acrylics, but just in case, these are the fabric weights that I love. Also got them on Amazon. They are linked in my description below if you're interested, but you can use anything for some pattern weights. And I believe that is it. Oh, besides the fabric that you're using. So the fabric I'm using is organic cotton knit, and this is the only fabric that I use for any of the clothing that I make in my shop. I get it on Spoonflower, and again, it's the organic cotton knit. You're gonna need some sort of um, knit fabric, so anything of your choice, as long as it stretches. And so I think that's about it for the supplies. So let's get started with cutting. Okay, before we get started on cutting out our piece, I wanted to let you guys know uh, a few quick directions per se on how to cut this. So the directions on the bell bottoms that I'm using call for cutting two of each leg on the opposite. So an easy way to do that and to not confuse yourself is to just pretend like you're gonna be cutting it on the fold. Even though you're not cutting it on the fold, uh, putting it like that makes you cut two opposite pieces because one is facing up and one is facing down. So if you put your pattern right in the center of your folded piece right here, um, that's not big enough, so let's go a little bit longer. So if I put this on here, just like so, and I cut it out, I don't have to cut on the fold, but this is going to give me two opposite pieces. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece out, and then I will show you, I'm gonna go ahead and just do that for video purposes. 
wasting minimal fabric. And when you come up to your last piece, it looks like this. So you've cut this out and I'm going to set that to the side. You have two opposite pieces of your front. So this is the front. This is also a front. There's two separate pieces here, but the way they want you to construct it is like this basically. So it's going to look like that in the end. So you're going to have two front pieces and two back pieces cut on the opposite. So don't forget that. So these two are done. And now the only other thing you need to do is actually cut on the fold the waistband. So make sure you pay attention to those directions if it says cut on the fold or just cut opposite pieces and how many you need because you need to cut two of each one but on the opposite. So the reason why I do it on the fold is because you're doing two steps in one to make it a lot faster. You can cut it singles on one upside down and then one facing forward. But why wouldn't you just fold it in half and get it done way quicker? That's how I think anyway. Also making note that your stretch on your waistband is going the correct way. I don't know if you can see it on here because it's acrylic, but I do have the directions on here. So the stretch is going this way, which means right here it stretches, here it does not. Here it stretches. So this is your waistband right here. You wanna make sure that you cut it on the stretch the right way. Otherwise it will not stretch over the body. After you get all your pieces cut out, you will have two of these back pieces, two of these front pieces, and one waistband cut on the fold. So once those are finished, the step that I like to do next, because I have messed up before, I'm not gonna lie, everyone makes mistakes. I have taken it over to the sewing machine and was like, oh, these two pieces go together, and then I would sew it together. No, you need to put one front piece with one back piece on for, uh, right sides facing together. So pretty sides facing together, print sides together, whatever terminology you like to use to help you remember uh, what sides face each other when you're sewing. I guess the technical term is right sides together. So I'm gonna put this right side against this right side on the front and the back. So you want a front together and a back together. So now that I know that these two go together, I'm gonna fold that and put it to the side. And then the next one is gonna go together as well. So the way you can know is if it lines up correctly and you'll know because a front piece and a back piece that get put together look like that. You can see the back a little bit more, the crotches line up and the ankles line up with right sides together. So that's how I do it so that when I get to the machine, I already know my pieces are matched up together and I don't have to worry about it any farther. So now we're ready to go over to the machine. All right, so now we are sitting at our machine and the machine I'm using today is my Juki 6800 series. It's the MO6814S to be specific. I do have it linked below in the description box. If any of you guys are interested, you can use my affiliate link there. And yeah, we're ready to get started on the first step. So I have one set of my front and back pair of legs in front of me right now. And what you're gonna need now is the tape that I was telling you about earlier. You don't have to use this if you don't have any or if you don't want to. You can simply just iron up your hem at a quarter of an inch or a little, I actually do a little over a quarter of an inch. I've actually like spaced it out just perfect because I've done so many of these and trust me, as you do them, it'll be habit. You'll get used to it over and over again. But this is my first step that I do. You can do this in any order you want, but for me, this is just the fastest way to do it. I like to do it and get it over with. So um, if you're wondering why I do this step is because I've constructed these several different ways and this is the way that just makes it easy in the end. It is an extra step just to note, but it does make my life a lot easier doing it this way. 
um, because when you go over to your cover stitch and you're doing your hem, you want to just do it really quick. And doing this step makes it super quick over there at the machine. So the first thing I do is I take my tape and I just kind of measure out, leaving about, I don't know, a half of an inch off of the edges because I don't want to sew or surge over the edge of my tape. So and I like to just tape above about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch up. And that's just kind of how I do it. I will show you guys as soon as I finish this one leg. And the reason why I do it this way is because I have a gadget over on my other machine that you guys have seen during my lives that is a half of an inch. And so when I fold it up like that, it just hems it perfectly on the edge right there. But this is what it looks like in the end. I don't know if you can see that, but there's just a little bit extra left over. And I do that all the way across, leaving about a half of an inch on each side or maybe even like a finger width. Um, because I don't want to surge over the tape. So I do that to both sides. Okay, I like to do this first because it's really a lot easier to do it when the legs are laying flat on the table. Um, if you've already sewed the t sewn the legs together or surged them together, it's a little bit harder to put the tape on nice and even if there's if they're already in a round circle. So we're ready to go on to our next step, which is to sew the pieces together. So what you're gonna wanna do is actually, you're going to take both of these legs that are right sides together. I like to line up the crotch seam right here. And you can start either at the crotch seam or you can start at the cuff. I actually like to start at my cuffs because it's a straight edge um, and you don't have to worry about the curve on the crotch. So you can start with either leg of your choice lining up again right sides together I start at the end of the cuff and you just surge down and follow the crotch and when you get to this point on the crotch right here you don't want to surge up this right here you want this to be open so you're just going to go from your cuff all the way down to your crotch seam and then go off I will show you in slow motion how do I do that And it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And just move along the curve of the bell bottom as you go. And then right here, you're gonna grab your crotch right here, the two points of it. I don't know if you can see that, but I've grabbed my two points, making sure that my fabrics are lined up correctly. And as you surge, you're just going to surge off the end of that point and pull it away. So now you have this right here, and this is where you ended with your serger. You can go ahead and cut that off because you don't need that. And then I always cut off the end right here too, because you're going to hem it up. You don't need to tuck those in. So then just flip it over and you're going to grab the other end of your cuff. Don't worry if it's a little bit big like that. It's supposed to be. So now you're going to do the same thing, except for on this one, you're going to surge all the way up to the top of the waistband. There's no stopping on this one. You're going to do one full, complete surged edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now you can cut those edges off and then you can do the same thing with the next leg. to the next step now after you've surged your legs together now you're ready to do the next step in my process so what I like to do after this step is I like to take just my my ankle or cuff my bell bottom whatever you want to call it is facing away from me so I like to have the bottom of the leg facing up away from me so I'm going to take off the tape the whole line of it just on the one part if you take it off on the bottom too it's going to stick to your table and it's going to make it really hard to do this part so do one at a time 
Okay, so once I have that done, I like to just then fold down, pressing as I fold, making sure that the edge of the tape, where I can see the edge, not the top edge, the, the bigger edge, so the one closest to you, you're going to press that down. That way it's going to leave you a good half of an inch for a hem. So see how I folded that down and I'm just gonna finger press that so that it's nice and taut down there. Then I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so now the tricky part is doing these two corners. What I like to do is grab it from the center and pull it like that. And then I like to lay down my seam, making sure that it's laid down nice and flat. Lay it down and pinch. Lay it down and pinch on both sides. That way it's nice and secure there. And then do that to the other side as well, making sure the side is laying down the right way, the way you like it, and then pinch down. Okay, and then you're gonna repeat that to the other leg as well. Okay, so when you're done, you should have cuffs that look just like that. And again, this is just my process. If you have a quicker, easier way for yourself to do it, have at it. There are no right or wrong ways to do this. This is just the way that I do it for me and the way that I feel like it works best and I just get in a groove and I just keep going. So this was my second step after sewing the legs together and then I, I pull up the hemline. Now I'm gonna head over to my cover stitch. Now granted, if I had like 10 of these to make or if I'm doing a lineup, I would do each step at one time. So if I had 10 more of these bell bottoms to do, I would put these aside and move on to the next one, do the same step. And then I would take all of them and go over to my other machine and do the hem. The reason why I do my hemming next is because I have tried and tried other ways. And if I move on to the step after the hemming, then these kind of come apart and they don't stick as well together. So if I do it right away, I notice that it's just much easier and cleaner and it's faster. So let's head over to the cover stitch. Okay, so now we're over at my cover stitch, which the one that I use is the Brother 2340 CV cover stitch. Um, I've been using this from the very beginning and I am due to get a Another one, um, and the one I will be purchasing next is the Juki. I haven't decided which one I want yet, but that is next on my list. I know I've talked about it time and time again, but I need to figure out where I'm gonna put it. So anyway, let's get started with the hemming. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hem guide that you just did, and I got these little gadgets. They are, um, you just set them on your machine, and they make it so much easier to do a hem. So this is a half of an inch. I've named it BB for bell bottoms, just so I know which one to grab. Um, I got these off of Etsy. I have linked them before. Not sure if they're in the description or not, but if you're interested, um, you can just look up Hem Guide on Etsy, and there's a shop that makes these. Um, just put in your exact machine, and they will mold them to fit your machine. So I like to start at the side seam right here where the side seam is. And I like to tuck that down underneath of my presser foot. And I like my needle to start right on there. So I'm just gonna put my needle down, put my presser foot down, and then you just go. So the reason for this is I just line my hem, this little guide right here. So as long as you're staying on that guide, it's going to go around as evenly as possible. So let's go. So I just grab and go. When I come up to this part, I just make sure my seam is folded the right way, tucked under there, and I give it a little push under the foot so that it goes nice, nice and evenly through there, making sure it's nice and straight. And then I just keep lining this up as I go. And as you can see, I'll show you in just one second, look at how nice and even that is on the hem. So these guys are definitely a must if you're doing a lot of hemming. Just makes your life so much easier than having to like 
sit there and try to figure out if you have it lined up or not. So let's just keep going. And as long as you're on your line right here, your seam guide, then it will go straight over those cover stitch and you won't even know that you overlapped it that much. So I do it about an inch and then I hand manually roll it. You want to lift up your presser foot. I use this handy dandy hook that I got from, I don't know, Silhouette or Cricut, whatever. You can get use any kind of hook. I'm making sure that your presser foot is lifted up. You can lift up this foot and I grab my strings or my thread with my hook and you want to press down on the two tension rod discs up here so that you're not putting any tension on your needle. And then I just cut in between and then I press down on my bobbin thread and then you just pull gently. And then that will leave you, it's already knotted at the end, it locks the stitches in when you're finished. And then you just cut off the excess and there you go. You have your beautiful hem. I don't know if it's going to focus. There we go. But look at how beautiful that hem is. And it's like that literally all the way around. So advice, go pick you up some of these little hem guides. Let's move on to the next one. Same exact process. So I bet you guys thought that that was an unnecessary step that I added to the bell bottoms when I first told you about the hemming tape. I bet you there were quite a few of you that were like, oh, I don't need to do that. But after seeing how much easier it is to hem the bottom of these bell bottoms, wouldn't you agree that that step is benef... what is the word? Beneficial? Um, it just makes the process a lot faster uh, for me personally. And I've tried it other ways, like I said, but they aren't quite as fast and they don't come out looking this professional. And I would say that these aren't perfect, but they are close to, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But those hem guides are a must. Um, when you flip it inside out, this is what it looks like. Super, super nice and finished, very polished, especially after you press it. So let's move on to the final step of putting the legs together. So what you're going to do is you're going to have your two legs just like this. You're going to take one of them, it doesn't matter which one, and you're going to flip it right side out. So once it's flipped right side out, I like to line it up with my crotch opening just like this. You're going to stick your hand in the, between the leg so you can have your hand like this. I like to grab it like this, it's easier to stick it through. You're going to take your other leg and you're going to stick it through the leg. I know this is going to feel kind of weird if you've never done this before, but what you're basically going to do is line up your crotch seam and your leg seam. So I like to take it and this seam on the inside, I like to match up with the outside seam. Again, patterns or right sides together. And then also you're going to take your crotch seam and line it up with the crotch seam of the one you just shoved in there. So you're going to take both of these crotch seams, so this one right here and this one, and you're going to line it up together. So you're going to come up with a weird circle, not even a circle, like looks like a U-shaped, like a horseshoe. You're going to find the tips of the two waistband or the waist of the bell bottoms and you're going to grab that tip and making sure that your crotch seam is lined up and then you're going to line up your other one. You can clip this, pin this, whatever you want to do. I usually just start serging it but for video purposes I'm going to show you where you can clip if you need to clip it or pin it. So once you get these lined up that's one point. This is another point. And then you're going to line your middle crotch area up with the seam, laying down your, your seam whichever way you like it to go. But you want them to go opposite ways. So it looks like this is going this way 
and this one's going the opposite way so that when you go to serge it, it's not too bulky. So you can go ahead and clip that if you need to. And it's going to look like this after you've clipped everything. So you will have right sides together. You're going to then, you're not going to serge the top part. You're going to start with the corner that slants up most and you're gonna start there. That's your starting point on serging. So you're gonna put that underneath your presser foot and then you're going to follow it all the way along up to this next point. So you're just going to sew, sew, or sew, sew or serge from this point all the way up to this point. You're going to not sew this. This is where your waistband is going to go. So do not sew that part. So I'm going to put this underneath here. Go ahead and cut your tails. And now it should look like this when it's all sewn together. Now you can reach inside of here, pulling out your leg. And now you kind of have a constructed pair of bell bottoms. So they're gonna look just like this. I don't know if you can see that very well but this is what they look like. So now this is where your waistband is gonna go. The rest of the body pieces are already done. You've already hemmed it. You've put your legs together. You're complete with your legs. Now you just need to add your waistband. So putting these aside, grab your waistband, which you cut on the fold. You're going to open it up. You're going to fold long ways. So I don't know which way is easier for you guys to look at it, if it's easier to look at it this way. You're going to put it in half, long ways. I did this on my last video with my shorties, showed you guys how to do this. So it's a lot easier, a lot of patterns say, just go ahead and serge down the edge, the raw edges. If you wanna do that, go for it. But this way makes two steps in one. So basically you're gonna fold it in half like I just showed you, and then you're gonna take either the front down or the bottom up, whichever way you wanna do it, and you're going to match up all four corners. So you're gonna have four pieces of fabric together at one point right here. And these are your raw edges right here. This is your nice edge, these are your raw edges. So all four pieces together on your raw edges, you're then going to serge at a quarter of an inch or zigzag, whatever you have. Go ahead and take that off. Next step, you are going to, this is going to be your waistband. So this is, might get a little tricky. You're going to see that you have right sides together, nothing, right sides together. So pins, clips, whatever you wanna to use to quarter off your waistband. So you're gonna fold it in half and it's going to look like this, just a round circle. So what I like to do is take it from the seam and that is my middle mark. And then I just point it downwards like this and this is where you're gonna mark off your bottom section. And then you're gonna grab it in half, making sure that your edges are all lined up nice and neatly and you're going to line those two up like that, and then these two right here where your middle fingers are, are your other sections. So you're gonna section it off into four different sections. Once that is complete, then you're going to make sure this is opposite of the, the shorties that I did the other day. So your waistband is going to be upside down this time instead of right side up. So I don't wanna confuse you. Um, waistbands are always upside down, cuffs, arm cuffs, neck bands, all that sort of cuff per se is going to be right side up. But waistbands are going to be upside down when you're looking at them. So if your raw edges are facing up towards the ceiling, and you're going to find that the print is going to be facing down this time because it is going to be a waistband tucked inside of the pants. So once you get your waistband the way that you want it, you're going to then lay it flat on your pants that you're using. 
So now this time your waistband is going inside of your pants. So you're going to put it inside of here, right sides together. And note that all the raw edges right here, you are going to look at your pattern on your waistband that you just folded, making sure that the pattern is upside down. So now that it's upside down, you're going to then make sure and clip all of your edges together. So your side seam on the back is going to go with your seam on the waistband and so on and so forth with each one. So go ahead and do that. Once you've got your waistband connected to your bell bottoms, we're then going to take it over to the machine and we're going to serge along the raw edges. So you should have three raw edges showing, two of which are your uh, waistband and then the other one is the pair of pants or the back and front of the pants. So we're going to come over to the machine. I like to start on my back seam back here. You're going to stretch it and pull as you go. So it's all wrinkly, very lightly stretch it and pull as you go. It is a knit material, so it will stretch very nicely. Now that you have completed your bell bottoms, they are going to look like this. And now we're going to flip them right side out and you'll be able to see the waistband is now going to be facing the right way. Everything is going to be facing the right way and you have a pair of bell bottoms now. So would you look at that? So cute. You can always do uh, the waistband in a different color if you wanted to do just like one solid color. I just always like to match my print with my whole legging. I just think it's so cute. But these are your bell bottoms. Now we just gotta go over it and press them and then I will be right back to show you what they look Here like. Here are what they look like all pressed. They're so, so cute. Look at them. So they're kind of more like a flare. I wouldn't say a true bell bottom, but so cute, so subtle, and I just love this print. This is my Christmas print, if you're interested. Um, I have an Etsy shop, and I also have a Shopify website, so if you guys are interested in purchasing any of these, um, I will have a this print, and then I have a matching boy one, so instead of having the mauve, it's a light blue. It's so pretty. So anyway, I hope that you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. Sorry it was super in-depth, but some parts of the tutorial just needed to be more descriptive. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And please consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And if you have any more ideas on tutorials that you would like me to do, please leave them below in the comments. And until next time, bye everyone.